Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A Detroit woman calls it a traumatizing case of false identification. It took something from me because I was like, what if I hadn't been pregnant? Now she's suing in hopes of stopping DPD's use of a controversial technology. And we thank you for being here with us for the News at 6. I'm Kimberly Gill. I'm Devin Skillian. Advocates of facial recognition technology say it can be a game changer in situations like finding and stopping an active shooter. But critics like the woman you're about to meet are concerned about privacy and the potential for serious mistakes. Jamon Fernandez here now with an arrest one local mother says should never have happened. Well, Kim, this woman right here says she initially thought it was a joke when police showed up to her door and how facial recognition technology led to her arrest is still traumatizing. She said she's filed a lawsuit against the city, hoping a wrongful arrest won't happen to someone else. And here I am pregnant. What am I going to do in jail? She calls her arrest humiliating. I was scared. And the criminal charges that landed her in a Detroit detention center earlier this year, devastating. I was going through a panic attack. Portia Woodruff says she was eight months pregnant back in February. That's when a group of Detroit police officers showed up to her home saying she was being arrested for carjacking and robbery. It scares me to honestly um, to have any type of interaction with the police. Serious crimes Woodruff and her attorney Ivan Land say she never committed. This is sickening. According to a lawsuit they just filed against the city of Detroit and a police detective, Woodruff claims the investigator's use of faulty facial recognition technology led to her wrongful arrest. The lawsuit claims Woodruff was detained after the crime victim met a woman at this gas station on Detroit's east side. He allegedly told police the woman who helped rob him was seen hanging out with several men here. According to the lawsuit, the victim's stolen cell phone was returned back here to this gas station. Detectives also picked up surveillance video here, but Woodruff says she's never even visited this place. Land says DPD's facial recognition tools found a seven-year-old photo of Woodruff. They say the carjacking victim, who told police he'd been drinking, picked Woodruff's photo in a lineup. Land said the detective ignored the fact Woodruff was noticeably pregnant. They're not equipped to deal with facial recognition. In a statement released by Detroit Police Department, Chief James White said, I have reviewed the allegations contained in the lawsuit. They're very concerning. We are taking this matter very seriously, but we cannot comment further at this time due to the need for additional investigation. So the charges against Woodrum, Woodruff rather, were eventually dismissed, and she gave birth to her son weeks after her arrest. However, the mom of three says the traumatizing impact of the wrongful arrest still lingers. Wow. It's some kind of story, and we know going all back to when we first heard this technology being announced, she's not the first person yeah. to raise concerns about it. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you know, right now, the ACLU of Michigan is now avoiding or among those calling on DPD to end its use of facial recognition technology. That group says Woodruff is the sixth person in the nation and the third person in Detroit to report being falsely accused of a crime based on the technology. The ACLU is also pointing out tonight that each of those accused individuals were black. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this one develops. Half of the nation's six cases Incredible. have been in Detroit. In Detroit, in Detroit. Yeah, yeah, that's about. telling. Yeah. All right, much more to come on that. All right, well, Warren City Council is responding in kind to Mayor Jim Bounce's latest attempt to get on the ballot despite term limit rules that say he's not eligible. Sean Light live tonight with how the council is responding to a federal lawsuit by Fouts. And Sean, there's not much time here to get this all sorted out. On the eve of a primary tomorrow, just hours away, Kimberly, we just spoke with Warren City Council member Mindy Moore. She explains council pushing back on the mayor's lawsuit in a big way and listen, she doesn't hold back. Well, it's just ridiculous. This is just one more. Uh, we have an election tomorrow. He's just trying to, uh, I think, just cause trouble. Um, he just cannot go out gracefully. Um, and, you know, to do this last minute attempt to disrupt things is so disingenuous to the voters. They voted for term limits. Tonight, Warren City Council member Mindy Moore tells me that number one tomorrow's primary will go on as scheduled. In fact, most people have already sent in their votes by mail. Today, Warren City Council filed a motion to dismiss a federal lawsuit filed by Warren Mayor Jim Fouts. He wants tomorrow's primary not to count. He wants a special election with his name on the ballot. However, term limits say the mayor's time is up. This is just a slap in the face to the voters. They are furious. We're getting all kinds of reports. Those of us going door to door campaigning, they're just furious over this last attempt. And even people that supported Fouts in the, in the past and um, uh, appreciated the job he did, 
know it's time to go. But the longtime mayor of Michigan's third largest city is asking for his day in court and is not going without a fight. He's asking for a million dollars from the taxpayers because he doesn't get to keep being mayor. It's just ridiculous. Back here live again. Number one tomorrow's primary continues on. They've already gotten thousands of mail in ballots. Nothing affects that no matter what is happening in court. Of course, I spoke with Mayor Fouts by phone today. Now he has an attorney. Mayor Fouts never had a loss for words, but says the attorney must now represent him and talk since this is in court. But Kimberly, you got the very big impression he does not agree with what counsel filed today. We're live tonight. Sean Lay, Local 4, back to you. Okay, Sean, thanks. East Point police want everyone to be on the lookout for a man on a bicycle going around stealing packages off porches. Uh, we've got a picture of him. You see him here. He's been spotted five times now stealing packages in East Point since early last month. Been seen riding a mountain bike as well as a BMX style bike, carrying a backpack or a duffel bag. Police say he normally operates in the early afternoon to mid evening. If you know him, see him, call East Point Police. A new Help Me Hank scam alert tonight about misleading mailings people are getting in Oakland County. The Oakland County clerk says over the past few weeks, several residents have gotten postcards with the heading County Deed Records or Home Warranty Division, seeming to represent the clerk or register of deeds. The postcards threaten a lapse in coverage, and some even claim the recipient will lose their property or be hit with a bank levy unless they call a 1-800 number. It's all a marketing ploy to scare people into buying home warranties at high prices. So if you get one of these postcards, notify the Oakland County clerk who also encourages everybody to use the free property records notification service, which will alert you to any document filed in connection with your home address. You can sign up for that at OCMIDeeds.com. New research reveals how many children are not getting the recommended vaccinations as toddlers. Study published in the journal Pediatrics looked at 2019 data on 16,000 kids aged 19 to 35 months to see if they'd completed a series of seven vaccines protecting against 11 diseases. They found about one in six toddlers missed at least one of the doses. Biggest factors are believed to be families moving across state lines, the number of children in a household, and a lack of health insurance. Study found only 1% of toddlers uh, were completely unvaccinated at all. Uh, it gets harder to rationalize unhealthy eating if fresh food is being brought to you. That's right, and that's the hope behind a new pilot program in Detroit. Will Jones joins us live to explain how one entrepreneur plans to make it easier to access fresh fruits and vegetables. Will. Yeah, Kimberly and Devin, the Veggie Express, as it's called, could be a way to improve the health of Detroiters, especially those living in food deserts, by setting up a mobile food stand near their homes. It's a grocery store on wheels, set up to meet Detroiters just steps from their door. The Veggie Express is a new pilot program by Pluck.eco, aimed at making it easier for Detroiters to access fresh fruits and vegetables. The prices are you know, reasonable, and then it's just so easily accessible. I was the first person to sit on the veggie truck. I am loving the veggie truck. The pilot program is running in the Clement Kern Gardens neighborhood. A lot of them find it hard to go out to the grocery store to get fresh fruit and veg. Um, whereas like getting maybe unhealthy food is a little easier. So these are local cherries oh. and these are not local cherries. Founder and CEO Chenning Duker says he wants to eventually take the Veggie Express to more low income neighborhoods in Detroit in the future. I hope so. That would be great. It helps a lot of people that cannot get around. Right now we're just testing with Clement Kearns. We're trying to get this model right and, and make it actually cost effective so it doesn't re rely on philanthropy. Pluck.eco is one of several startups at New Lab and Michigan Central. The biggest thing that we're focused on is different solutions that can help improve uh, the life for community and Detroiters. I have to say it was so cool to see all the residents lining up coming out of their homes for this mobile food stand. They were so happy to have the Veggie Express in their neighborhood and it will be back there Kimberly on August 21st. Really, really cool. Yeah. Well, so, so how soon will it be before the Veggie Express spreads to more neighborhoods in the city here?
Duker says his goal is to have it spread throughout the city next year. Right now, he's just testing it out, and he's getting a lot of good feedback mm -hmm. from customers so yeah. far. Kimberly? People seemed really excited about it in your story. Will, we appreciate <laughs> Imagine, that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, been kind of a dreary, overcast, cloudy. In fact, this morning, it was almost like wondering if the sun had come up at all. Yeah. Yeah. And a little bit cool, too, this morning, Kim. <laughs> yeah, today definitely felt a little bit like summer was over, but it certainly is not. We will be warmer for the rest of the week, and we will get our sunshine back. In fact, if you look well out to the west, you will see a break or two of the sunshine even this evening before it sets just before 9 o'clock. But it's cooler than normal, 73 downtown. Howell is at 73 as well, 71 in Pontiac, and 72 in Adrian. It's a little cooler where they've got the clouds up to our north in Port Huron and also over in Mount Clemens and Lapeer. But the west side, notice Lansing popping up to 78 degrees. Lansing has a bit more in the way of sunshine. Doesn't happen often, but it does happen where Alpena and Marquette warmer than we are here in Metro Detroit. If you're headed to the Tigers game tonight, it gets chilly, especially after the sun sets uh, for the second half of the game. Temps will drop down into the 60s, but we do warm up and we have a chance for rain tomorrow. We'll talk about timing in just a few minutes.